So black and white are two very interesting sort of colors that we have inside of Teleport that we really just don't like. This is actually the matte black and this is our standard white PLA. And we're gonna go through both of them and discuss the pros and cons of each because they really highlight the biggest problems that you can have when using these materials. So let's go ahead and start with white here. First of all, white is a good color because number one, it's a very nice color to use for a lot of products. It looks good with almost everything. This is a, a knee pad, this is kind of a functional sinking thing, and this is a kitchen part, which is a, a measuring set of measuring cups. But white is a very difficult material to work with because it is a filled material. White colorant is a lot like toothpaste, and when it goes into these parts, it can create all kinds of problems with the melt flow of this stuff. White also has many different shades, so maintaining consistent supply is one of the main things that we focused on when we introduced it into Teleport. But ultimately, when you're working with white, the main thing you have to work with is the cosmetics. White is the worst cosmetic material to print with because it shows every single possible little defect. Now, in this case, this is an unprocessed part, but even those very subtle wispy hairs can be seen because you have white on there. If this was solid black, you wouldn't be able to see that kind of stuff. Though at the same time, if this had been printed with standard black PLA, those would not have occurred. That is part of the flow dynamics of white itself. And we adjust for those types of things, but certain parts still induce that kind of stuff. But white shows every possible defect. So any sort of deviation in the side surface or anything like that can cause issues. So right here, these sort of pronounced edges get more pronounced as they're printed because again, white causes that. And white induces them more than many. It can also mess with your tolerances because white does not shrink as much as some other materials, or in some cases, it can shrink more. Again, the coloring is very, very inconsistent. But the worst and most critical part of white actually often comes on the first layer. So in this part, you can see that there are a number of stains and deformations right here on this first layer. There's a little bit of warp right there at all as well too. I intentionally grabbed this damaged part in order to highlight these things. White highlights those small imperfections that generally aren't always caught but are enhanced and magnified by using white. Whereas if you use something like a yellow or a green or red, and of course black, those basically become invisible. The warps of course not, but you get rid of those and that kind of stuff and we don't ship that kind of thing. But it's just the thing to watch out for with white, any sort of those specs as well. These are not always bed contamination. They can sometimes just be accumulation of dark marks from the nozzle. And it's a possibility that that could get missed during QC checks and that kind of thing. So white is just a difficult material because it increases your risk of the part looking a little bit off. So if you can use some other color, it's generally the most robust. And because of all these problems, white can be a little bit more expensive to print with than many of the other colors. So even though it can look really nice in a lot of instances, you also don't want somebody to just put a big old thumbprint across it when your customers get it. So white can be a difficult color to work with. It's kind of like the story of Steve Jobs. When he was building the Apple store, there were fingerprints all over the glass. And somebody said, I'll bet nobody's ever had to clean glass before. So he brought all the engineers and had them clean it. Well, that is the same case with white. How often have you interacted with a purely white product that was not immediately messy, smudged, and nasty afterwards? So why would you want to make a product like that? Now, matte black. Many people go to matte black because it's just a beautiful surface finish. This is printed with the exact same sort of resolution, but it's just a nice, clean surface all the way through. And it works well for all these other types of parts. Many people default to matte black because it's just an automatically beautiful looking 3D printed part. And that's again because of the fill. Filled filaments always look really good because they basically blend together the layers a little bit. But the problem with matte black is that it is the weakest of all the materials. Matte black has very poor interlayer adhesion. So you don't wanna make any parts that are strong or rigid or anything like that because it can be broken so easily and delaminates kind of like a wet plywood and that kind of stuff. It's also really flex more flexible than others because it's just kind of softer, but it just splits apart and peels so easily compared to other sort of printed parts, especially native PLAs. So matte black is never to be used for a strength-based application. Certainly not one that should flex or move and that kind of thing. So this is the biggest danger of it. It always looks beautiful. It always has a great surface finish, all the rest of it, but it is just such a weak material. It should only ever be used for either very well-designed parts that are really reliable or for just purely cosmetic sort of pieces. This right here is a marble run with a small mechanism in between. That works fine, but again, it's not a high strength sort of a situation. This sticks up on the side of the fridge and moves on with life. But 
you always want to watch out for this because many people will think that matte black is the same as white or even black itself, and it's not. Black PLA is far stronger than matte black PLA. And in fact, even though white is also one of the weakest materials out there compared to the other colors, matte black is weaker than that even. So you really want to avoid it if you have a critical structure inside of your part. And if you do have to use matte black and you have to have it be strong, you have to design it appropriately. Do chunky features, make sure it's strong enough, make sure there's margin in your area. Don't have like vertical tabs. If this was printed like this, where the layer lines were going this way across that little tab, we would probably even reject the part because that would just snap off immediately because matte black has no layer adhesion. But since this designer designed this stand to be printed like this, to where that has much more interlayer adhesion because it's a diagonal cut, that is okay and more reliable. But hopefully that gives you some context around the two worst colors that can possibly appear inside of Teleport and the highest risk ones of causing bad parts. The black, matte black will always create a weak and wimpy part, but always looks beautiful. White can look beautiful, but you have a really high risk of something being seen because it highlights even the smallest potential little stains mirror or fingerprint, uh, even for your final customer. So why would you want to give your final customer an item that will eventually become dull and stained and ugly. So while matte, black, and white have their places, they're not something that you should necessarily default to if there are other options available.